splendor arise. In splendor arise. Fling wide the gates and welcome him. Fling wide the gates and welcome him. Into your life. Into your lives. He comes the broken hearts to heal. He comes the broken hearts to heal. The prisoners to free. The prisoners to free. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom. Welcome, my friends. Welcome. Welcome to this time of exhilaration and hope for what a special day it is. For Jesus is bringing new life into our own lives. It's a special day to join as one as we welcome Christ, as he is making his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. It's a time for us to celebrate as we experience anew the ways that Jesus is ushering in peace that surpasses all understanding. The songs of praise that we sing today echo the joy and the enthusiasm of those who gathered for the first Palm Parade over 2,000 years ago. Our first Palm Sunday, together since COVID began, also brings us these special eco-palms, palms that we can wave high knowing that these are ecologically friendly palms, and they offer sustainable incomes for farmers and their communities. So filled with joy, let us move into worship as we turn to the opening words on our screen. When the disciples were asked to quiet down, Jesus responded, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout. These palms serve as visible reminders. These can be taken home and placed in a visible spot to remind us of the question, what is it that I am doing in my life to praise God for all to see? 
Hosanna. Savior, we wave our palms and sing our praise as we remember your triumphal entry into Jerusalem. May your spirit enter the heart of our worship this day, giving us strength to endure the journey which is ahead. Amen. So now, as we turn to our prayer of confession, there's going to be moments of silence followed by the words, O living Christ. And upon hearing these words, all are invited to respond, we hold our palms high, we, pull, we hold our palms and wave them high. So let us pray. O living Christ, we hold our palms and wave them high. We offer our praise and shout for joy, yet even as we hold these palms, we confess that too often we forget to call your name. We busy ourselves with concerns of financial gain, ego building, and other distractions. We sit with you in the silence. O oh, loving Christ, we hold the palms and wave them high. We magnify your name, yet we often will put our trust in communities or committees, strategies, finances, and often think little of what it means to be your servant. Oh, loving Christ, we hold the palms and wave them high. We hold the palms and we confess that in one moment we sing Hosanna and the next deny your very love as we might gossip or we might neglect the poor or we might retaliate against those who have hurt us.
And even when we turn our backs on God, the doors of forgiveness are open wide for us. And we can sing Hosanna to Christ because God, God does not hold grudges. God opens arms of love to take us in again and again and again. God's love endures forever. Amen. Your part goes like this. Oh, give thanks. Thanks, God's love endures forever. Oh, give thanks, oh, give thanks, God's love endures forever. La, 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 la. Your turn, right? Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks, oh, give thanks, God's love endures forever. Good. Oh, give thanks. They all went to the bathroom. Can you believe that? I think they had that planned. Maybe, maybe. Huh? Having a bathroom party. Maybe I should go in there and take care of it. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Huh? Come on out, guys. Oh, here. Man, how many bathrooms? Man. All right. Hey, today, today, how many people know how to, how, how to be really loud? Who can be really loud? Okay, so today, when I hold this up, you see what it says? It says, praise God for Jesus. You need to say this as loud as you can. Now, I've already told the people upstairs, I've already told the people upstairs that they might want to turn this mic off because, see, I used to be a soccer coach, and I'm really loud. So it might get really loud, okay? So if I don't need to participate, you guys show me how loud you can be, Okay. Okay, you got it? All right, so I'm going to tell a little bit of a story, and then when I hold this up, that's your cue. You just, you just let it out, okay? You want to practice one time? 
You know, you guys got it? Loud as you can be. Got it? I hope so. I hope so. Here we go. Jesus and, his, Jesus and his friends were almost there. They could see the big gates just in front of them. They could, they could hear the people calling out. Then Jesus turned to his two friends and said, Please go ahead and find a young, young donkey which, was given, which had been given anyone to ride before. Please bring it to me, and I want to ride it to Jerusalem. The two friends ran ahead to a little village, and they found a young donkey tied to a post. Quickly, they untied the donkey and, and began to lead it back to Jesus. But the owner, could you imagine if you walked up and you took somebody's donkey? Would you think he'd be upset? Yeah, let's see what happens here. The owner of the donkey called out, Hey, that's my donkey. Where are you going? Jesus' friend said, We need the donkey for Jesus. The owner wondered if something important was happening. He let them take the donkey, and soon Jesus was riding on the donkey. What kinds of sounds does a donkey make when it walks? No, I, no it, it goes clippity clop. Clippity clop. So now they're riding on the donkey, okay? More and more people came out to welcome Jesus. And the voices, oh, here we go. The voices of the children grew louder. Praise God for Jesus. Ready? I'm going to have to join in the next time if you guys, you got to get louder than that. All right, here we go. The donkey's footstep came closer and closer. Listen, the children said, clippity-clop, clippity-clop. The children heard the donkey's hooves on the road. Then they saw Jesus, and the, chi- and the children called out again. Oh, that's okay. I like that. Some of the children helped the grown-ups spread clothes on the dusty road. Everyone watched as Jesus rode the donkey along the road and, and over the people's coats. The people began to cheer. Okay, people, this is the people's turn. Jesus showed us the way. Ready? Jesus. I'm going to get involved with the next one. I think, I think we can get louder. I think we can get a lot louder. Okay, here we go. This is the last one. This is the last one. All your guts are you ready? Here we go. Some of the city leaders saw Jesus coming on the donkey, and they heard the crowd shouting. That wasn't loud enough, was it? That was good. Here we go. They said, tell the people to be quiet. The leader said to Jesus, but Jesus shook his head. There is so much happening here. If the people were quiet... The stones in the road would jump up and shout for joy. Whoa. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine a stone jumping up and shouting? That's crazy, isn't it? Wow. I want to thank you. Let us end in a prayer. Jesus, we thank you for living on the earth to show us the way to God. Amen. Thank you, guys.
reading for today is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 28 through 40. And it's here that we meet up with Jesus just after visiting Zacchaeus' home, which we experienced last week around this table. And today, Jesus continues on into Jerusalem. Here is the reading. Jesus went on ahead to Jerusalem, where when he had come near Bethphage in Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. We're going to stop right there because when you hear somebody say, I want to get on a colt that's never been ridden, has anybody ever wanted to try that? That's a pretty tough thing, right? I think those of you that have tried it or had to um, work with horses learning how to carry people, know that's a challenge. Jesus had it in him, though. And so those who were sent departed, and they found it as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, the owner stopped them and asked, Why are you untying this colt? And they simply replied, The Lord needs it. And then they took the horse. And then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. And as he was now approaching the path down the Mount of Olives... The whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds and the powers that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. And some of the Pharisees that were in the crowd, they said to him, Teacher, teacher, order your disciples to stop. And Jesus answered, I tell you, if these were silent... The stones would shout. Here ends our reading. And please join me in prayer. O compassionate God, there are times in our lives when we forget the life that you bring. Our lives become filled with ordinary, everyday things, and we try to keep things at status quo. And we forget the joy of today, of Christ's triumphal entry, and the excitement we feel when Christ enters more fully in. And we forget being loved by you, O Divine One, you who are so filled with compassion that you willingly laid down your life at the cross. Help us to find that joy today and every day. Help us to search within the words of your scriptures. Help us to be like Jesus and be like his followers on that triumphal entry and help us to become a people whose faith cannot be kept quiet. Amen. Now, I remember not so long ago the first presidential campaign that took place after I moved here to Lancaster. I don't know if you all remember the 2008 presidential election that brought both candidates into our county. At the time, I thought that that was something that would happen every presidential election, and since then, I have found that we were just really lucky that year. That year, we had the opportunity to hear each candidate up close and personal, and the emotion and the excitement was palpable as we anticipated the days when each candidate would arrive. Listening to the campaign, I'll tell you, listening to anything on TV, the speeches and the rhetoric, is nothing compared to the time when both presidential candidates came to our county. In the days before the candidates would arrive, it was the talk of the town. I don't know if you remember, but it was the buzz everywhere that I went. People were filled with hope and expectation And then the day arrived for each candidate, of course, different days. And perhaps you, like me, can remember the fanfare. Barack Obama's long, long, long motorcade of black limousines driving through town. John McCain's long line of buses with large banners on the sides. 
supporters lining the streets for their chosen candidate on their given day, holding up signs of welcome and support, cheering and shouting so that they could be heard by those inside the cars and inside the buses. I remember being at both events, and I remember how it felt to be so close to something that was so important. And as they drove through the town, I remember standing along the side of the road, wondering, wondering which tinted window each candidate was sitting behind on their given day. And though I had actually heard John McCain speak in the 80s and had a chance to see him up close and personal back then, and while I was in high school, I had, I had heard a lot about uh, McCain because he was very involved in our local area. And though I had also read a lot about Obama and heard about him through our church for years, now one of these two men were going to be the president of our country, and here they were in my backyard, so to speak. It was a nostalgic moment for me. And then when each candidate stepped out of their vehicle on their given day, I believe that the loud cheers that greeted the well-dressed, impressively groomed men could be heard across the county. Talk about pomp and circumstance. That was impressive. Anyone who was there recognized just how important and powerful that these two men were. And as soon as they emerged, the crowds, they would push in to get tighter and tighter, just to get a little bit closer, perhaps be able to touch them. But they were kept at a distance by a swarm of seriously looking, well-dressed individuals whose job it was to keep them safe and to escort them to their venue. But if we were lucky, lucky enough to get through the lines and make it to one of those speeches, most that were there hung on every word that was spoken, every moment that they felt, hoping perhaps for a split second of eye contact from their given candidate, or either candidate. And both of the candidates, while they were here, they spoke about keeping the peace. Keeping the peace in our towns, in our country, and even in our world. And for the days that followed each visit, we would hear the talk around the town, even at work, even in the lines at the grocery stores, even in our homes. Did you get a chance to see them? Did you hear this? How close did you get? There was this kind of vibration in the air that that I hadn't felt before, and I don't believe I have felt it after since then either. The excitement and the enthusiasm over both candidates coming into our town, it couldn't be contained. It couldn't be quieted. And perhaps you remember that time. Perhaps you can think of another time if you can't remember that time. Perhaps there's another time in your life where there was a great deal of excitement and enthusiasm that seemed to spread like wildfire across the community. And now holding on to that memory and the feeling of excitement for a moment, let's reapproach our gospel reading for today. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem was quite different than what any one of us might expect. He comes in dressed in rather simple clothes, and he is most likely dust-covered after all of the traveling that he had done. He rides in on a humble colt or donkey, depending upon which scripture version we read, and it's a colt or a donkey that had been borrowed from some unknown source that seemingly willingly lets that colt go, and he is surrounded by everyday-looking people, people dressed perhaps like you and me, Or perhaps people that were dressed in rags, lacking baths or lacking good grooming. They certainly would not have looked like the well-dressed men who escorted Obama and McCain into their given venues in 2008 when I saw them. And like Jesus, the disciples that surrounded him, after all, they had been traveling on dusty roads on foot for quite some time. And there weren't hotels to stop at for a quick shower. There weren't groomsmen to clean them up before they could be seen in public. Where is the formality? Where is the elegance? Where is the magnificent pomp and circumstance? 
the contrast is striking, not only for us in our day and age, but it also would have been striking in Jesus' day as well. And as we think about it, we become more and more aware, more aware of just how different this man named Jesus was. Jesus isn't about pomp and circumstance. For Jesus is ushering in a different way of understanding, a different understanding of what is truly important and valuable in our lives. Jesus has no intention of keeping the status quo. Especially, especially if keeping the status quo means that certain groups of people and certain groups of anybody would benefit while other groups will linger in struggles that there is often no way out. Jesus wasn't a politician back then, and Jesus isn't a politician now. And Jesus isn't about impressing us or dressing in any certain way to be able to get our vote. Instead, Jesus is about bringing a peace, bringing in a peace that surpasses all understanding. And much of what is about to unfold in the next few days in our scripture reading, it will be the price, the price that he has to pay to bring that peace. For those who had the holy privilege of being able to physically walk and talk with Jesus in those days, they witnessed extraordinary events, and they were events that changed their lives forever. And they were events that we continue to talk about and read about 2,000 years later. And they're events that continue to change our lives today. And we can imagine how high the hopes were after hearing about all of these amazing, miraculous events. We can imagine the excitement that pulsated from the crowds during that first palm processional. And we can imagine what it felt like, what it felt like to have Jesus coming in to their backyard, so to speak. Hopes must have been sky high. And of course, of course, there's always that feeling that they don't really know what it is that they're hoping for and cheering for, Could they possibly have known what lay ahead? Did they fully grasp Jesus' mission in this life? But those questions, those questions make this story all the more real for us today. So much more like us today was that crowd. Because we don't really know, we don't really know what it is we're cheering for, what it is we're really hoping for. Only Jesus knows what future he is trying to usher in. But we can know. We can know the pulsating vibrations of excitement at the thought of being there that day. And we must respond. And we responded this morning as we came in with our palms held high. And like those gathered back then, we too, we too can't be kept quiet. We must shout out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And then we get the image. We get the image of a more impressively groomed group of people. Those who would have wielded power from an earthly perspective. Those who would have entered into town with a myriad of pomp and circumstance. And we hear this group of leaders, we hear them say to Jesus, Hey, you, hey, you on that dirty donkey, hey, you, this ramshackle, dirty, dusty crowd is getting out of control. You are messing with the status quo here in town, my boy. Get those followers to calm down and quiet down. And what does Jesus say? Jesus says, No, no, for. Even if these people were quieted, the stones would shout out. You see, Jesus knew. Jesus knew the desperate state of the everyday crowds that surrounded him. He knew that it was this desperation, this yearning that kept them down. He knew that those who benefited from the status quo and keeping the peace, so to speak, They didn't even recognize the struggles that the everyday, ordinary people had. The very life of Jesus 
the very life of Jesus and the promises that he brought into their lives brought an excitement, an enthusiasm, an anticipation, and a hope that was very real and very palpable that all of creation reverberated. It reverberated so much that when the people were silenced, just a few days later, the stones indeed would be heard shouting out the good news. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Indeed. And in a few days, upon Jesus' death, the people were silenced, and guess what? The earth does indeed respond. It responds loudly. Creation will respond with quaking and darkness, even during the darkest part of the day. And so I invite you to take a moment to look at what is from nature in our own pews. Touching our palms, it might be difficult to imagine them reverberating with shouts of joy without our help. For they seem to be about as lifeless as the rocks that Jesus is talking about in our reading. Perhaps the reading causes us to wonder what could possibly make such a lifeless thing shout and reverberate. What are we to do with these things? What are we to do with this understanding? It's tough. It's tough for us not to just imagine that stones can be shouting out our praises for Christ. It's tough. It's tough for us to imagine ourselves living in a way that shouts, Hosanna, Hosanna, in a way for all the earth to hear. Living as Christians out loud, so to speak, living in a way that others can see our lives as Christians, it can be challenging to say the least. And there will be people in our lives, even our own inner selves, that seek to quiet us down, much like the Pharisees. And we often hear from people, settle down, don't be the cause of trouble, don't mess with the status quo, don't rock the boat, so to speak. Now, speaking of rocking the boat, I don't know if y'all are history buffs, but I love to learn about things that happened in the local area in the past. And there is a church in our denomination that's closer to the Susquehanna River that at one time had a boathouse for the community to house their boats. And the pastor of the church at the time, he would take the small children out in the boat and teach them about the water. He would teach them all about how to be safe in the boat and if harm happened to them, if they fell in. And he taught them these lessons so that they could navigate safely in the boats and then swim safely to the water, to the shore when needed. The kids, they learned that the river, they learned the river so well that even if their boat rocked to a point that someone would fall in, they could keep their heads high above the water until they could get to a safe place to stand. So let's go ahead, along with those children on the river all those years ago, let's go ahead and rock the boat, not in some haphazard, unplanned kind of way, careless kind of way, but let's rock the boat sometimes in a way that knowingly knows the waters well enough to navigate ourselves towards the solid ground and a new way of living, a way of living in Christ. For it is in Christ, it's in Christ that we will always, we will always be able to find a safe place to stand, no matter what life brings us. Now, of course, we know that there are challenges ahead. There are challenges each and every day, but especially this week, there are challenges we will encounter. But this one day, this one joy-filled celebration is needed. The disciples, even Jesus himself, need today. We need today to celebrate and sing our hosannas. So it is that today we celebrate. We celebrate along with the crowd all those years ago with raised hopes and dreams 
dreams and hopes that stir a song of praise from the depths of our soul, a song of praise that cannot, cannot be kept quiet. We need this celebration to bolster our strength and our courage for the journey ahead. And even though today begins the holiest week of the Christian year, we know that today, today is the week that we get to sing our songs and bolster our strength. And we know that being Christian after we leave here is an everyday experience. We can't walk out of these doors today or any other day and just clock out as if we are leaving work or leaving someplace else clocking out for the day with nothing to do that we're responsible for following and welcoming christ into our lives into our own selves is an every day every moment all of our lives journey each and every day 24 hours a day in this lenten season that we have been on this journey that we have taken it's a time for us it's been a time for us to reorient our lives towards God, reorienting our lives towards what it is Jesus is bringing, just in case, no, I would say actually because we often slip off course. We often lose our way. Now, perhaps some of us have even fallen out of the boat and we needed desperately to find a safe place to stand once again. And this season has been a time for us as individuals and as a community to look inward To look inward in ways that enable us to follow Jesus, not just today on this joyous time of celebration. But it's a way for us to be able to follow Jesus all the way to the cross this week. The cross. Everything that Jesus has done, everything that he has said, leads to the cross. All the healing, all the teaching... All the fasting and the praying, the multiplying of loaves, the blessing and the breaking of the bread, the time in the wilderness, and the time on the road, the words to his disciples, and the arguments with the powerful. All of his life, all of his love leads to facing that cross. And understanding the depth of a love that is that deep, A commitment that is that strong is difficult, to say the least. And we often will slip into participating in the same systems of power that held a grip over those people in Jerusalem a long time ago. The same power that crucified Christ. And it's this lived reality, this truth, that we will stumble. And we will fall out of the boat at times. But it's also the truth that as we sit on the edge of Holy Week, about to step forward into the struggles that lay ahead, we need this moment to celebrate so that we can step forward and find a safe place to stand. So let's take a moment, a moment in quiet, to ponder these things and prayerfully open ourselves up to the joy that we so desperately need today. So it is today. Today we continue the celebration. Today we shout hallelujah. Today, the excitement and the enthusiasm cannot and will not be contained, for today allows us to make a way for Jesus to ride on, ride on.
prayer. This time includes moments of silence that will be followed by the words, nothing can trouble. And upon hearing these words, all are invited to sing. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. Those who see God shall never go wanting. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. God alone fills us. And let us pray. Eternal word, who sustains the weary with a word. Give us resolve during this holy week to continue our journey of conversion and renewal and excitement and hope as we follow Christ on his way to Calvary. Nothing can trouble. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. Those who see God shall never go wanting. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. God alone fills us. Comforter of the troubled. Let your face shine on your steadfast servants and all of creation. Grant peace and tranquility to all the world, especially by the peoples who are affected by war and famine, climate change, those who are affected by poverty or the pandemic, lost jobs, illness, and those here in our own country and communities that they may know dignity, justice, and true happiness. Nothing can trouble. Nothing can trouble. Nothing can frighten those who see God shall never go wanting. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten God alone fills us. Fount of consolation, have mercy on us. For your creation is troubled. We pray for the broken parts of this, your creation. Grant rejuvenation the opportunity to shout for joy and healing onto this earth. Nothing can trouble. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. Those who see God shall never go wanting. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. God alone fills us. Life giver, pain bearer, Love maker, day by day you sustain the weary with your word. We pray for the aches and the pains within this community, within our families, within ourselves. Grant your peace. Nothing can trouble. 
Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. Those who see God shall never go wanting. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. God alone fills us. God of the wind. Gently encourage us to place our trust in you. Awaken us to the suffering of those around us and give us grace to share one another's burden in humble service. And hear us now as we pray the prayer taught so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our as we forgive our debtors. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So now, let us return to God the offerings of our lives and the gifts of the earth. Let us give with the enthusiasm felt during Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Amen.
And let us bless these gifts and all of the gifts and treasures that we hold up in our hearts in dedication to the work of Christ today. Blessed are you, sovereign of the universe, as we enter the gates of Holy Week with thanksgiving in our hearts. May what we offer today help, not hurt, heal, not heal, to serve you, O God of freedom. Amen. played today and Phil Halsinger and Diane of course for providing us such special music. And I want to invite everybody to a little bit of fellowship and conversation and a little bit of food after the services in our narthex. For the Lenten way has become the way of the cross and we must journey forward watching our step each and every step of the way. So let us walk into this week holding on to the joy we feel this day, walking into the unfolding story, confident in God's steadfast love, which endures forever. Amen. Thank you. 